A very good morning. Welcome uh, to the session on cryptography, network security, and cyber law. Today we will continue our discussion on module three. This is our eleventh session on security at transport layer. So in this session we will be discussing on the key design ideas in SSL handshake protocol. and also we will see uh, the issues involved in ssl record layer protocol and what we mean by open ssl at the end of the session you will be able to elaborate on the key design ideas um, ideas of designing the key and also you will be able to describe the uh, ssl record layer protocol and uh, you will also be able to explain the concept of open ssl and the apis that are involved in it now let's start with our discussion on ssl handshake in the previous session we had seen uh, various steps involved in uh, uh, ssl handshake there are four steps that were involved in ssl handshake the first step uh, dealt with uh, A negotiating of the um, a cipher uh, uh, suit uh, for the new session that was uh, about to be negotiated or about to be begun, and the second step was um, uh, the server was sending a certificate uh, from its end to the uh, client so that uh, the client is able to use the public key of the ser uh, of the server. and the third step was uh, uh, generating and deri deriving various uh, key parameters and also we have seen the parameter the keys that were generated that is pre master key master key and also the derived uh, keys six derived keys we have seen and the last step that is the step 4 uh, wherein four messages were exchanged between the client and the server two from the client and two from the server we have seen that uh, the client is uh, trying to perform an integrity check by uh, uh, by calculating or computing a keyed hash over all the messages that were uh, uh, that were sent from the uh, uh, that were exchanged between the client and the server and uh, this uh, and also the client uh, was able to verify the authenticity of the server now having understood these four steps in the ssl handshake protocol um, we have certain other parameters or other issues to be discussed so, so some of the issues that we will be discussing in this session is the key design ideas uh, and in which we will see the key exchange methods that are adopted in order to exchange the keys uh, keys securely between the client and the server and also we will see how server authentication is performed in the fourth step and also uh, we will discuss on the session uh, on the difference between the session and the connections so moving further okay now in the steps uh, step 2 of ssl handshake protocol we have seen that uh, server dispatches its uh, certificate to the client now once the client receives the certificate uh, what what it does is it extracts or uh, it extracts the public key from the certificate and then it uses this public key to encrypt the pre master secret now let's see this in a better way now we have we have server and a client the server sends the server certificate to the client the client upon receiving this certificate extracts the public key from this certificate now once the public key of the server is extracted from the certificate received from the server the server uh, the uh, from the server the client then uses this server public key in order to perform encryption of the pre master secret now the question is how do server and client realize on the pre master secret now before that we will see what if the server certificate is signature only 
now if the server certificate is signature only which is uh, which is sent by the server to the client it means that the serve uh, that the client and the server can use this certificate exclusively only for signature generation and verification it cannot use this pair of keys for encryption now in this case uh, if the signature is only uh, if it is a signature only certificate in that case the sig se secure socket layer performs or permits the server to create a temporary public private key pair now once this public private key pair are created temporarily by the server the server then signs the public key along with the modulus which is used to generate the key pair and these uh, uh, public key and the modulus are signed with the server's private key they are signed with server's private key so what is the server doing the server is first generating a temporary public private key pair now this uh, this temporary public private key pair out of that the public key along with the modulus value are signed by the server's private key now once this is signed the public key along with the certificate the signed public key along with the certificate is sent to the client now what does the client do the client receives this certificate along with the signed public key now first it verifies the signature on the public key so this part will be verified which is sent from the server and then it uses this uh, and it and it uses it to encrypt the pre master secret now we have seen that if the certificate is signature only certificate in that case how ssl behaves it creates a temporary public private key pair and then establishes a communication between the server and the client moving further now what are the various uh, key exchange methods available now the various key exchange methods available are rsa and defi hellman either one of them can be used in order to exchange the pre master secret now let us see there are two ways in which uh, ssl can uh, exchange the sec pre master secret one we call it as fixed defi hellman and the other one we call it as ephemeral defi hellman key exchange now let's see what happens in the fixed defi hellman key exchange now the fixed uh, now uh, there are as we are aware there is a client and a server these are the two communicating parties who want to communicate with each other and establish a new session in order to establish a new session the server now we are uh, completely discussing about what happens in step 2 and how key is exchanged now server has a certificate with defi hellman key parameters now what are those defi hellman key parameters which server uh, certificate has the prime number p the generator g and also the public key of the server now g raised to a mod p is public key of the server and uh, where g is the generator a is the private key of server and p is the prime number now all of these three are present in the certificate and this certificate from the server is sent to the client now upon receiving this certificate the client first what it does is it will retrieve the public key from the certificate once it receive retrieves the public key from the certificate which is sent by the server it also takes the other parameters of defi hellman uh, required for uh, realizing the defi hellman uh, keys now b choose uh, now the client chooses random number b now this random number b acts as private key of the client and then having chosen the private key of the client the client further proceeds to compute its public key the public key can be computed using g raised to b mod p 
now once this uh, public key is computed at the client now this client will send the public key to server now over here we can see the fourth transaction wherein uh, the client is sending the public key to the server now once the server receives the public key of the client it can proceed further with the computation of pre master secret now for the computation of the pre master secret as we already know in defi hellman it uses the public key of the client that is g raised to b mod b uh, and to that raised to a mod b g is generator b is uh, this whole set is the private uh, is the public key of the client raised to the private key of server mod p p is the prime number similarly on the other end client also computes a pre master secret now what is the, how does the client do this it uses the same procedure as that used by the server it takes the public key of the server um, and then uh uses its own private key to compute the sorry this has to be g raised to a mod p which is received uh, from the server this is the public key received from the server raised to b mod p okay you can correct it yourself now these two will always be will always help client and server realize same keys now this key we call it as pre master secret now the question is why is this uh, pre master secret called as or this entire procedure called as fixed defi hellman key exchange because there are fixed parameters which are present in the certificate the, um, these are the fixed defi hellman uh, parameters which are present in the certificate and every time you try to every time it will help it will uh, help the client in the server realize same keys now let's see what we mean by ephemeral defi hellman key exchange in the ephi ep ephemeral refers to short lived now over here let us see what happens the certificate does not contain the defi hellman key parameters and the signature the certificate is signature only certificate and it has it it does not have any defi hellman key parameters so the server selects the defi hellman parameters prime number p and generator g and then it selects a private key a and computes the public key g raised to a mod p now after uh, performing all this the server signs over prime number generator and the public key of server now once these four uh, once these steps of selecting and signing are performed the server then sends the message to client now this message that is sent by the server to the client contains the signed parameters the public key of the server and the signatures now the client on the other hand other end receives this information from the server and then it proceeds with the calculation of pre master or computation of the pre master secret as discussed in the previous slide now why is this uh, a key exchange method called as ephemeral since the defi hellman parameters and the public key may be chosen new for every session we call it as ephemeral defi hellman key exchange now the certificate does not have inbuilt defi hellman key parameters but every time the server wants to communicate with the client it will choose explicitly the defi hellman key parameters and then sign it and send to the client hence this variant is referred as ephemeral defi hellman key exchange now we come to the end of key exchange methods wherein we started our discussion with <coughs> sorry 
how a certificate is shared by the server to the client in step 2 of the uh, handshake protocol now what happens over there is that the uh, the server sends its certificate and the client retrieves the public key contained in the certificate and uses that public key to encrypt the premaster secret further to the discussion we have seen that what happens if this certificate sent by the server is signature only certificate now if it is a signature only certificate then the server will generate a temporary public private key pair now after uh, selecting a temporary public key pair the public key and the modulus are signed by the server using the private key of the server now this signed certificate is a uh, public key and the certificate are sent by the server to the client the client upon receiving it will verify the signature and then use it to encrypt the uh, premaster secret now uh, subsequent to this discussion uh, we have discussed about uh, the various key exchange methods available now either the client can prefer to use an rsa method or a defi hellman method now let's assume if the uh, client uses a defi hellman method in that case there are two possibilities one possibility is the fixed defi hellman key exchange method and the other one is ephemeral defi hellman key exchange method now what happens in case of fixed uh, defi hellman key uh, exchange method is that the signature itself contains the defi hellman key key parameters that is the prime number the uh, generator the public key are all present in the signature and the signature is exchanged with that of the client but uh, the other counterpart of this uh, fixed defi hellman key exchange is the ephemeral key uh, defi hellman key exchange method wherein the certificate does not have the defi hellman key parameters you, you now when when does this situation occur if the signature if it is if the certificate is a signature only certificate in that case there is absence of defi hellman key parameters now now how do we achieve this defi hellman key exchange if there is absence of defi hellman key parameters now in that case the server selects uh, prime number p uh, g the generator and then compute the uh, public key g raised to m using g raised to a mod p by selecting its private key and once all these are uh, once this uh, step is performed all these parameters are signed the signed parameters along with the public key and the signature are then sent to the client and further process of defi hellman uh, key realization is used now this is about key exchange methods further to this discussion we will uh, there are other issues involved in ssl handshake protocol the next issue that we will be discussing is server authentication now why do we need the server authentication now important credentials or important information is shared between the client and the server the client should be able to verify the genuinity of the server now in the first in the handshake uh, protocol we have seen that the first three methods it is simple uh, clear exchange of, um, uh, simple exchange of messages in clear that is no uh, uh, nothing uh, uh, much is done no uh, encryption or uh, anything is done over there now now what is being done in case of ser server authentication is uh, we need to verify the authenticity of the server which is communicating with the client this uh, authentication of the server is done in step 4 of ssl handshake protocol now what exactly happens over here let us now in the uh, ssl handshake protocol we have seen in step 1 step 2 and step 3 lot of messages are 
exchanged as an handshake messages now for all these handshake messages a hash is computed by both the communicating parties that is the client and the server now this hash will act as integrity check for the previous messages that are exchanged now once this hash is computed by the communicating parties they are sent to each other in step 4 now the question that arises in our mind is why is it that we are performing this hashing and integrity check now all the handshakes that are used in the previous steps from 1 to 3 they are all handshake messages they are all sent in clear between the client and the server except for the encryption uh, uh, over the pre master secret hence since these messages are sent in clear it is possible for an attacker to modify these messages and create disruption to the uh, session establishment now moving further now let's take a simple example as to what happens if the attacker uh, is able to modify the messages and how we can combat these particular modifications or attacks now for example let's say an attacker during the negotiation of the cipher suite changes uh, the choice of 128 bit des key with a 56 bit key obviously if we are using 128 bit des key the strength of the cipher will be very high but what the attacker has done is he has modified it to 56 bit des key in this case when we use this particular key to encrypt the plain text or the message it generates a weaker cipher or a less strong cipher now this weaker weak cipher can be easily compromised by attackers now this modification which is done by the attacker should not be possible or should not go undetected now mac the calculation of mac in the step 4 helps us detect any modifications over the handshake messages which are performed previously now let's see further the keyed hash computed by the server is verified by the client now the client uses the server's mac secret to verify the keyed hash now the server's mac secret is one of the six derived secrets calculated in step 3 now this secret is a function of the master secret now we know that the derived secret is obviously obtained from the ma ma master secret along with the nonces and also the predefined constants now this master secret in turn is a function of pre master secret now finally we get to know that the mac secret is obtained from one of the six derived secrets now this these uh, all these secrets are performed and derived in step 3 now this derived secret is obtained from master secret by applying a function now this master secret is in turn obtained from pre master secret by applying a hash function over it now this is how we get the server and the client to verify their mac secrets now let's recall that the pre master secret is chosen by the client now it is encrypted with server's public key hence only server alone can read it because the server is the only person who can decrypt it using his own private key 
and only the client and the server are aware of the six derived secrets or six derived computations now the server uh, the client only after receiving and verifying the keyed hash which is received from the server it gets convinced the client gets convinced and says that the server is finally authentic hence authentication of the server is proved in the fourth step of ssl handshake protocol now once the server is authenticated now we move on to understanding what we mean by sessions and connections now in the sessions and the connections we will try to differentiate between the session and the connection if the session is long lasting if it lasts for a long duration in that case a good practice would be to change the keys we cannot use the same set of keys for a long duration now ssl provides with two provisions one provision is changing the keys by creating new connection within an existing session we keep the same we uh, uh, res, uh, we uh, have the same session within this session we create a new connection now the the, the advantage of using this method is the overhead of creating a new session is overcome this will involve decryption of the pre master secret with private key operation now what is the second provision the second provision provided by ssl is creation of new connection or creating a new connection over here the pre master secret is not chosen again a new master secret is computed from the existing pre master secret so we have the pre master secret and we will further derive a new master secret out of this pre master secret along with that two fresh nonce nonces uh, are selected one uh, each by server and the client now let's see uh, the experiments uh, performed by apostopolus now this scientist measured the overhead incurred by apache web server with ssle 8.0 the time taken to set up a new connection in an existing session just took 3 milliseconds whereas the overhead of setting up a new connection on a server using 1000 1024 bit rsa keys is 45 milliseconds obviously we can understand that using uh, or establishing a new connection within an existing session will be more beneficial and less lightweight than that of uh, setting up an entire new session over a server the let this this one will give us more overhead and this the setting up of a new connection in existing session will give us less overhead now let us conclude this particular topic by uh, by differentiate uh, differentiating between the session state and state of a connection now the session state includes pre master secret and the negotiated ciphered suit and a session id whereas state of a connection will include two nonces master secret the six derived secrets and the two message sequence numbers one for each direction of the message transfer so having understood the differences between the session state and also the state of a connection we can now move towards understanding the ssl record layer protocol the secure socket uh, uh, layers record layer protocol is responsible for transmi uh, transmitting data securely using negotiated cipher suite 
uh, of the step 1 and also the keys derived during the SSL handshake. The, now the main tasks of this record layer protocol include computation of MAC and, compute, and encryption computation. This is performed for every message and also fragmentation is carried out if the data transmitted is very very large. Now if the data transmitted is large then fragmentation occurs and each fragmentation is less than or equal to 16 KB. Now let's see what happens when a connection is established. On establishment of a connection the sequence counter is initialized on both the ends. Sequence counter keeps incrementing for each packet that is exchanged between the client and the server. The sequence number is not sent but it is used during the computation of MAC. Now this the sequence number is not sent along with the packet but we use it for the computation of the MAC at both sender and also for verification of MAC at the receiving end. The MAC computed on concatenation of the MAC is computed on concatenation of 64 bit sequence and fragment. The next step is what if the date if the size of the data fragment is not a multiple of block size. Now obviously when when it is not a multiple of the block size that is required in that case we append the uh, append bits to the uh, data fragment so that it becomes a multiple of the block size. Now this appending of bits we call it as padding. Now the data fragment along with the MAC and the pad if, uh, if required it is uh, appended is encrypted. Now after encryption is performed we a uh, uh, header is prepended to this particular encrypted data. So what is done is initially we perform uh, fragmentation if required. Now if this fragmented data is not uh, a multiple of the block size in that case we perform padding and that is adding extra bits to make uh, the data fragment a multiple of the block size. Now the actual data fragment along with the MAC that is calculated and the padding if it is done totally they are encrypted. Now after encryption is performed, now they are uh, this entire encrypted data is prepended with an uh, header. That is an header is attached in the front of this encrypted data. Once the header is prepended to the encrypted data, it is sent to the TCP layer that is the underlying layer for further processing. Now remember that the SSL record layer is below the handshake layer and above the handshake layer is the application layer. Now once this uh, 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 packet is sent to the TCP layer for further processing, let's see the entire uh, explanation with the help of a diagram. We have a fragment. This fragment, over this fragment a MAC is calculated. Once uh, this MAC is calculated over this data fragment, we append this MAC at the end of the fragment. Now once this fragment is appended with the MAC, we will see if it is a multiple of the data uh, block. Now if it is not a multiple, what do we do? We perform padding. Now over here padding is not depicted. Now once uh, the padding is performed, the fragment along with the MAC and padding if it is if it is appended all three together are encrypted once encryption is performed now what what is done is a header is prepended to this encrypted block of fragment now this header we call it as ssl record layer header after uh, appending this packet is sent to TCP layer for further processing. Now the question that arises is what does the header have? The header contains one byte which specifies the type of the content or content type field.
This identifies the higher layer protocol that is used to process the fragment. So the content type field helps in identifying the higher, la higher layer protocol that is used to process the fragment. Now two bytes of data are used to specify the version number field. Finally, we have another uh, field which specifies the length of the fragment in bytes. Now the, these are the three fields which are present in the SSL record layer header, a protocol header. Now moving further with our discussion, now let's have a recap of what we have discussed in SSL record layer protocol. In the SSL record layer protocol, we started our discussion with the need for SSL record layer protocol. We need this SSL record layer protocol to securely transmit data between the client and the server. Now the main uh, tasks are computation of MAC, encryption and fragmentation if required, if the data transmitted is very huge. Once that is done, we have discussed about what happens when a connection is established. We have sequence counter which keeps incrementing as and when the message is sent. But this sequence counter is not a part of computation of MAC or verification. It is not a part of the message itself, but it is used for computation and verification of MAC. Now further to this, we have seen now how this MAC uh, encryption occurs and how it is further sent to TCP layer. Now the fragment, data fragment over uh, for that we calculate the uh, MAC. Now, if the data fragment is not of appropriate size, then we perform padding to make it uh, to the size of, uh, with, uh, of the, which, is, which will be a multiple of the block size. Now, the data fragment along with the MAC and padding is encrypted and to this encrypted data fragment, we attach or prepend a SSL record layer header. This SSL record layer header has three fields. Now, what are those fields? One is the content type field which will identify the higher layer protocol that is used to process the fragment and the second one is the version number field which is of two bytes and the third one is the field length uh, that is sorry that is the length field which will specify the fragment size in bytes. The size of the fragment is usually 16 KB. Now moving on to uh, SSL, open SSL, let's see what we mean by open SSL. OpenSSL is an open source implementation of the secure socket layer. It is based on SSL Lee library. Now this OpenSSL was developed by Eric and Hudson. Now what does this OpenSSL contain? What is this OpenSSL uh, open source implementation? It has many libraries. Now these libraries help us with cryptographic algorithm implementation and digital certificate generation and validation. Now what is the use of having OpenSSL? Now with OpenSSL, it is easy for a developer to develop an application because there are a lot of APIs that are available. Now this a these APIs allow SSL, SSL enabled communication that is a secure communication and then easy setup of connection and easy concluding or tearing of the connection and also helps in certificate storage and uh, management and verification of certificates. Now with OpenSSL, a developer can rely and easily implement an application with required security. Now having come to the end of the uh, session, now in this entire uh, uh, today's session, we have discussed about the various key design ideas. We have understood what we mean by SSL record layer protocol and also we have understood the concept of open SSL. Now this uh, open SSL is uh, nothing but an open source software implementation of our secure socket layer protocol. 
now this uh, protocol uh, this protocol implementation has huge number of libraries and apis which help in easy implementation of cryptographic algorithms and digital certificates generation and validation now this open ssl helps developers uh, implement application secure applications with ease having understood uh, sec uh, security at transport layer we conclude this session and if there are any queries you can email me over this id or you can contact me over this particular uh, number thank you have a good day